then open it up to, um, to the audience. Um, so I suppose the, the obvious first question, what was it that motivated you uh, to make the film? Because you spent a long time, 10 years, uh, preparing and trying to, um, trying to get access to the monastery. So what was the motivation? Can you hear me? Um, yes. Okay. Um, well, <clears throat> the, I live in the square that the monastery is in, so I used to, um, I could hear the monastery bells and I kept thinking it's really strange that there's a monastery right in the, in the middle of an urban congregation like Notting Hill. Um, so that was the first thing. It was very curious to um, see this sort of, well, the, all I could see was the external walls and the sort of like kind of like monastery. So at some point, it was about 12 years ago, I started writing letters to them and asking them if they'd be interested in having a documentary made about them. And I got an answer back saying it was a very interesting idea, but not at this moment in time. Which wasn't an outright rejection, so nine or ten months later I wrote another letter saying, have you changed your mind and what about this idea? And this went on for ten years. And um, I finally got a phone call from the prioress, um, right out of the blue, just saying, would you like to tell me about this documentary that you'd like to make about it? And at first I thought it was one of my friends taking, you know, <laughs> so I almost gave her a, a different answer to um, what I would normally have done. Um, and I just said, well look, I've got no idea what I'd like, what the film's about, because I don't know what happens inside the monastery. So, um, she said, well, why don't you come and talk and uh, we'll see what happens, and that's how it started. Um, okay, the, the second question I have is, um, Despite the silence um, of the film, the film's quite psychologically intimate when you actually get to talk to some of the sisters. Two of the sisters, for example, spoke quite in depth about a, a crisis of faith that they'd had, or I think they called it the long dark light of the soul. Um, and that through that they came to a new understanding of God. I just wondered how comfortable the sisters were with opening up about that part of their life and whether that was part of, of the agenda, that they knew that that was part of the agenda before you went into the monastery? Um, I don't think we had, either me or the sisters had any sort of preconceptions about what was going to happen um, once I stepped inside the monastery. I think for both parties um, it was a completely new departure. They, I don't think they'd ever allowed a man inside the monastery before um, other than the priest who would come in from time to time on the religious processions that you see in the film. Um, undertakers clearly when uh, the sisters die. And obviously plumbers and builders, there's need for infrastructure. Otherwise, there's, there's nobody else goes into the monastery. Um, so I, I'm not sure they had any idea of what they were facing. Um, and I really didn't know either. But I did say to them at, at the beginning of the filmmaking, I'd like to interview them to see um, what their life was about and what they thought about it, how they came to choose that life. Um, but it wasn't until maybe three or four months of filming that I started to interview them, where they then started to feel quite comfortable with me. Um, and I think the interview started out, um, as most of my interviews tend to do, as a sort of very simplistic thing, and I don't really have a sort of list of questions, but as the answers come back and then I would answer, ask a question that would develop from one of the answers. And so some of the answers that I got were a bit of a surprise to me, particularly when we talked about the, the, what they call the, the dark night of the soul. Um, I was really surprised that um, they struggled for so long with sometimes losing their belief and then finding it again in a stronger position. It didn't surprise me that they wouldn't question the existence of God because I think that anybody in those <coughs> circumstances uh, would question and you'd have to question that at some point. So that wasn't a surprise but what was a surprise is the way that they were very forthright about it. I thought they might take um, if you like a party line that was like of course there's no question of the existence of God and of course there's no question that I would um, even doubt this. And I thought that that might be a kind of line that they would, would choose to put out in public, but the fact that they were very 
honest and um, revealing about that was a bit of a surprise at the time. Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to open the question <coughs> to the audience now. Um, if anyone would like to, to ask a question. I'm going to actually scan for up and give you one. Oh, yeah. I can't yeah, yeah. Oh, George. Hi. Hi. Um, I was just wondering, I recently saw in some great silence about the confusion, yeah. I think. And clearly making films about monsters in the difficult business because of the, the question of access. I just wondered, if you had sort of if that had any influence on you if you'd spoken to the his ex the director of that one about his experience because obviously these are neighbours of us and just yeah. had any influence um, on that subject. No, I had it easy compared to him. I think he waited eighteen years. Sorry, he waited eighteen years. I only waited ten. So um, it's kind of ironical as well because it's a bit like buses. You wait all this time and then two come at once or something <laughs> like that. Um, but um, I, mean, I didn't talk to him, and, and I wasn't aware that he was made, that film was being made until I pretty much started my own film. But it was very comforting to me to see, you know, I, I saw the film, bought the DVD, and every time I came back from the monastery, um, thinking, oh, I'm not sure this is working, nothing's happening, I would put on that DVD and think, oh no, it's all right, you know, even you know, if he can do it, I can do it, and things like that. So. Um, I, I guess I had an easier time than he did. And also, I was allowed to interview the sisters, and I think one of the restrictions that he had is that he he wasn't allowed to interview them. So I, that made it easier for me in that sense. Mm. seem to me you, you can't do that and you can't you know bring lights in and uh, that whole um, atmosphere of what's going on that contemplation all of that you seem to get destroyed so I, I went into with a camera not dissimilar to the one here and you're looking for available light so you're obviously trying to make the best of what you've got um, and of course from time to time you know you're very lucky with the light falling in, in the way that it did. And the fact that the sisters are wearing habits which haven't changed for several hundred years gives it that kind of 17th century feel. So um, it's a, a mixture of chance and good fortune and also looking for it when uh, the, the opportunity came. That helps. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I guess I have what most people's image of a monastery is, that it would be uh, a few prayers, a bit of contemplation, um, uh, just like that really. And, and, um, and I, you know, having just been given permission to go in, and after a few weeks I had a bit of a panic, um, which was kind of summed up by um, a cousin of mine, we were having a family gathering and he said, asked me what I was working on at the time and I said, well I'm just in the middle of trying to make this film about this monastery and he said, well what do they do? And I said, well they pray. And he said, well, well how long is it? And I thought, well you're right, you know, what, you know, how do you make a film about this? Um, and this was before I'd seen Integrated Silence. So, um, it was a, I suppose for me it was finding out as much as uh, I really had plunged into something that I really knew very little about and it was, a, it was quite a while um, before I began to 
get a shape and format to it and, and an understanding of that, the kind of rhythm and rituals 